Okay, please note that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I do not make buy or sell calls. I may make mistakes and do not guarantee that the information shared are all accurate. I may be invested and buyers on the stocks I discuss. Please consult your financial advisor regarding the risk involved in investing. Opinions I have are my own and for educational purposes only. Okay, as part of our exploration of Jadid Matheson Holding, I'll have a look at Hong Kong Land, which is one of its uh, companies underneath uh, Jadid Matheson. Right, so uh, here they have some introduction on Hong Kong Land. It's a major property uh, investment management and development group founded in 1889. Right, uh, a lot of land, uh, mainly in Hong Kong, Singapore, Beijing, and Jakarta. Right. Okay, all these things are fine. Okay, incorporated Bermuda, primary listing in London Stock Exchange, secondary listing in the Bermuda and Singapore. Alright, so they are managed from Hong Kong by Hong Kong Land Limited and is a member of Jardine Medicine Group. Alright, let's look at the highlights. Alright, so underlying profit you can see here has dropped 20%. Right, again. Uh, they, they're using the same idea as uh, Jardine Matheson where they use underlying profit attribu attributable to shareholders right? this is a better representation of ongoing business performance right? and non-trading items okay? so uh, because uh, profit attributable to shareholders uh, takes into consideration uh, other things that uh, may skew uh, the underlying profit attrib attributable to shareholders because uh, those things are one-off items, all right? So, for example, re revaluation of properties, maybe, or uh, something they have to. Uh, it's a one-off cost, lah, that should not repeat itself, right? So, the underlying profit attributable to shareholders is a better measure of their uh, operating business, right? So, you can see that if you drop twenty percent, it's not a good thing, okay? And if you look at accounting profits, right? It went from negative last year to a positive this year, right? But if because we 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 care more about this, right? Uh, actually, things have gone worse rather than uh, gone better, right? Uh, shareholders funds uh, dropped a bit. Net debt gone up fourteen percent. Not good, right? This not good, right? Underlying uh, earnings per share, right? More or less in line with uh, profits attributable. Shareholder has gone down. Right, earnings per share similar to the accounting aspect. Right, dividends per share is maintained. Uh, I'm not sure this, if this is a good or bad thing. Right, so uh, why I say that is because if they cut dividends, clearly they think they are in trouble and they cannot sustain dividends. Okay, but the fact that they didn't uh, bring dividends up means that they are also cautious with the forward outlook. Right, NAV has dropped slightly. Right, uh, 14 from slightly above 15 to slightly above 14. Uh, so slightly below 15 right which i don't think is a really big uh, issue okay we'll look a little bit at why the performance was so uh, from chairman statement right so profitability lower in 2022 okay this primarily uh, from the perspective of i believe he's talking to the underlying profit right because actually uh, accounting profit got better right so he said uh Group's prof profitability drop, okay, due to low contribution from development property business in the second half of the year after be doing well in 2021. Okay, uh, investment was resilient. Investment properties were res resilient, and uh, retail portfolio, uh, there were just minimal changes, right? Which is good, I guess. Right, I think Hong Kong office is the big problem, right? So this one we've discussed before, uh, profit attributable to shareholders, these accounting profits, okay, uh, why is it so low, right, when the underlying profit is this much, it's primarily because of the uh, non-cash loss of this amount, because of low valuation of the group's investment properties means the building is the same, just that uh, they became uh, valued at a cheaper number, right. So, uh, 2021, okay, uh, NAV is the same, uh, dividends unchanged from last year, okay, we won't worry too much about that, alright, I think, when I read this part, I think the main problem is Hong Kong office, uh, right, so they're saying they're concerned about Hong Kong office and, uh, yeah, 
so Hong Kong office is the main issues. Uh, the rest of the country seems quite positive. Uh, in Beijing and Macau, the retail malls were affected, but I think this should improve. Yeah, so uh, maybe I want to have a look at the outlook quickly. Alright, so uh, 2023, uh, what, what it depends on is the pace of recovery of the property sector in the uh, Chinese mainland. Okay, so stable contributions from investment property business. Okay, uh, they expect rental revisions for Hong Kong office portfolio to be negative, right? So this is the one part where it's not good. The rest they seem quite optimistic. Right, let's look at the outlook. Right, so uh, yeah, I, I think I won't touch on strategy because I'm probably not the best person to analyze that. Right, I'll just quickly look at what they think. Okay, I'll just look at Singapore because that's where I'm from. Okay, uh, office leasing is healthy. Uh, yeah, seems seems to be quite uh, positive. Right, uh, I think China or development. Right, uh, yeah, we'll just look at the summary a year ahead. Okay, so uh, there should be an improvement in operating environments across majority of key markets. Right, uh, investment property portfolio in Hong Kong and Singapore remain well positioned. Okay, because of high quality tenant base and low vacancies. Okay, in property development property business extent of improvements will depend on pace of recovery of the Chinese mainland property sector so uh, this one I'm not super optimistic on okay given that China's economy doesn't seem to be doing so well right so yeah I think that's it for the outlook